You know, I always say there's no better way to start your day than with a carved wooden fish and a one log house. Okay, fine, fine. I've never said that before. And I've never started my day this way. But there's a first time for everything. We're back on the Redwood Highway just north of Piercy, California to check out the famous one log house. A house on wheels, as it turns out, constructed from a single redwood log. Cut down in 1946 that was so massive that they were able to basically construct a mobile home trailer out of the thing. I mean, look at that for a size comparison. Whoa! This thing is 32 feet long, 7 feet tall, and weighs 42 tons. And it was made from just one little section of a roughly 2 thousand year old tree. All right, well I've already been inside the gift shop to pay my two dollars for today's code. So I guess it's time to log in. Ooh, whoa. Wow, dude. Would you look at the size of that log? Oh, wow, nice. Two beds in here. A couch in the back. A little dining area. Dude, this place is nice. Matter of fact, this one log house might be longer than my whole apartment. Dang, amazing. Dude, it took Art Schmock, the original creator, and his friends eight months to hollow this log out. With chisels and wedges and whatnot. And then they stuck it on wheels and let it tour the country. Originally, there wasn't so much stuff inside. It was much simpler and less RV-like. This thing actually toured the country for years and years like that. Until it finally came back home to the Redwoods and sat next to a gift shop in the 1950s when it was converted to look, you know, more homey. Actually, even then, this thing kept moving around. It was moved from town to town and gift shop to gift shop up here in the Redwoods. Until finally now, today, still on its original trailer, it sits along US 101, California's Redwood Highway. Ah, oh, heck yeah. Dude, I can see myself traveling in this thing. Logging some miles, having meals over here at the table. I can see it all now. Pretty awesome. All right. We've seen the famous one log house. I guess it's time to log out. I was going to head into the gift shop, but some of the stuff in there is a lot more leaf related than log related, if you know what I mean. Luckily, if it's wood you're after, then the place next door has got you covered. It's the world famous grandfather tree. Wow. Grandfather is awfully large and old too. 1800 years. That is literally ancient. Sadly, the gift shop is closed today. So we can't buy any baby grandfather trees. But we can admire all these huge redwood carvings. Look at that. They got a couple of sea captains. Bears with red noses in one hand. And here's something I didn't know. Apparently, bears love ice cream. Well, then again, who doesn't? Let me get a lick. Mmm. Kind of woody tasting, honestly. But hey, if that's what you're into. Man, not only do they have all kinds of bears. They've got the bear's chairs. One for Pa. And Ma. And Baby. Even one for Goldilocks. Honey, that is very cool. I'm sorry, I try not to make those jokes, but I can barely contain myself. Whoa. What in the heck is that? I heard there were cougars around here, but that is terrifying. Now, the grandfather tree is very impressive, but the coolest part about this place is that it's basically right on the border of the historic Richardson Grove. Now, this state park's visitor center, what you're seeing here is what remains of the old-timey lodge and gift shop, and apparently at one time, you could enter the long-gone gift shop through the base of this massive redwood tree hollowed out by fire centuries ago. Nowadays, you can't go in there anymore because Batman's babies are up there. I can't see any bat babies, but if the sign says it, well, I guess it must be true. Dude. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. No, I don't mean the visitor center and the old lodge, even though they are rather beautiful. I'm talking about the grove itself. It is mind-blowingly gorgeous. These absolutely massive trees are hundreds of feet tall. And in some cases, thousands of years old. They are breathtaking and absolutely dwarf everything around them. Dude, coming to a place like this is so utterly and completely humbling. You really just feel like a little insignificant speck next to these giants. And it's not just the size. I mean, think of the age. John Steinbeck said they're not like any other trees we know. They're ambassadors from another time. 
And I know he said that because it's on the sign right here. Thank you, helpful sign, for making me sound smart. Yesterday I was at Confusion Hill, and that's where I had actually planned to end my Redwood Highway trip, at least for now. I spent weeks researching the history of all that stuff in the last few episodes, which were all back across the county line in Mendocino County. So for Humboldt County and all the Redwood Highway stuff up here, I was going to head home, do a bunch more research, and come back in a few weeks. Which, of course, I still might do, but just in case that takes a while to get back. I decided to squeeze in an extra day of traveling among the giants. Worth it. Totally worth it. Now, as much as I like looking at historical stuff like the Richardson Grove Lodge and everything, I also love checking out wacky tourist stuff, which is why we're going to get it in gear and head up US 101 a little farther to one of the wackiest and most brightly colored tourist attractions of them all. The legendary Legend of Bigfoot. Dude, I may be a little short on time today, but I always break for Bigfoot. Don't you look at the size of this guy. Oh, yeah, aptly named. And Bigfoot may be solitary, but he's not alone. Because they've also got this giant Sasquatch sick pick opportunity. Yes, look at the size of that Sasquatch. Dude, and look at the size of this little Sasquatch. It's a Sasquatch for sale. Sweet, they've got Bigfoot statues, Bigfoot t-shirts in every size, Bigfoot socks, Bigfoot posters and postcards, plush Bigfoot, Bigfoot books and keychains and stickers, Christmas ornaments, lunch boxes, action figures, even Bigfoot bandages in case you injure your Bigfoot. Just about the only Bigfoot product they don't have are any small carved Bigfoots. Oh dear. But at least they're not bear of bears. As a matter of fact, I gotta tell you, I have never seen so many carved bears in one place in my whole life. There's barely enough room for them all. But don't worry if these products are unbearable to you. They've also got giant wind chimes, weird spinning things, mushrooms, and gnomes. Everything from the cutest of the cute to the weirdest and sometimes most wildly inappropriate gnomes I've ever seen. They've even got gnomes being stepped on by Sasquatch. Because he got tired of giving them piggyback rides. Speaking of gnomes, up above the main gift shop is an area near the restrooms with a whole bunch of fun pick opportunities, including the biggest gnome I have ever seen. What you look at? The size of that gnome, it's gargantuan! I thought gnomes were supposed to be little, although I know better than to belittle the gnomes. You know what rhymes with gnomes? Homes! And look at this red wood trunk made in to a cute little playhouse. Aww. How cute. This guy over here is not impressed, but this little wooden boy looks happy enough, eh, Pinocchio? Any place that's a home for the weird and wonderful, not to mention giant Smokey the Bear wood carving, is a place I approve of, right, Smokey? Only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. All right, this attraction here is very new school. And before I have to head all the way home, I just have a hankering to see at least one more very old school attraction. So we've come up modern US 101 to an old long ago bypassed section. California Highway 254, better known as the Avenue of the Giants. This is just the very beginning of it. Just a few miles from here, it starts to pass through some of the largest trees on earth. But before we get there, one of the first attractions you see is one of the oldest on the road, the Living Chimney Tree. According to legend, in 19. 14, some people who were hunting up here made their camp at the base of this giant redwood tree. And the story goes that their campfire got out of control, and while redwood bark is very resistant to fire, when it comes to the inside of the redwood trees, that's a different story. Somehow the fire found just the right little cranny to work its way in, burning out the whole inside of the tree, hollowing it out all the way up. And later, a windstorm came and blew the whole top of the tree off, turning what was left of the tree into a giant hollow tube. Well, that only made this spot all the more popular because now all the hunters and trappers and loggers roaming through the area could camp inside the tree and their campfire smoke would go up it just like a chimney, which led to this being known as the chimney tree. Well, not wanting to let a good free tree go to waste, eventually someone came along and turned the inside of the chimney tree into a gift shop. And the property next to it became an old-timey auto court. Built in the 1930s, the Rocky Glen Auto Court was located right here where the chimney tree grills outdoor seating area is. Seems hard to imagine now that all those little cabins could have fit in this small of a space. Flood damage in the 1950s and 60s changed the landscape quite a bit, but couldn't destroy the still living, by the way, chimney tree whose gift shop moved next door to the 
then new Chimney Tree Grill. Looking pretty old school now. It's a very nice place to stop and eat. Not to mention using the very clean and very old school looking restrooms. I actually have fond memories of visiting this place as a kid with my parents. I got to go inside the living chimney tree. Probably because back then, like now, it was living chimney free. But unfortunately, there was another attraction here that I never ended up getting to see. The long ago abandoned and forgotten Hobbiton USA. Right here in this planter under the then working little water wheel were bushes that spelled out Hobbiton USA. Advertising a Lord of the Rings themed walkthrough trail located right up here on the hill. Mysteriously created here in the 1970s. This place has now been abandoned for over a decade. Look back there. You can just barely make out the remains of an old hobbit hole. That is actually amazing. It's one of the few pieces and few traces left of this abandoned attraction that hasn't been vandalized and destroyed, stolen, or completely claimed by nature yet. I believe, I believe, this was the door to Bag End. You can see where the old doorknob would have been right in the center there. Obviously broken off and stolen a long time ago. This hill and the whole trail are now almost totally impassable, mainly because of all the trees growing up here, but also because of these zillions of incredibly thorny and painful bushes, some of which I literally just fell into to show you that. <laughs> Ow! Oh, dude, that is... Ow, so painful. At one time, the trail back there was quite extensive. And if you paid an admission fee of a dollar or two, thus the reason why I never got to go up there when it was open. Come on, mom and dad. You could take the self-guided walking tour. That actually used to start right behind a gate right here next to the parking lot. And see colorful concrete recreations of some of the scenes from Tolkien's story. See, look at this. The path is now completely overgrown. The thorns and brambles are intense. A lot of people think that the reason this place closed and was abandoned over a decade ago was because of the Lord of the Rings movies and not having the rights to the characters. But apparently that's not what happened at all. In between owners, the last of which didn't really take care of it, because it got so overgrown and was never ADA compliant, the new owner, who's super cool and nice by the way, was not allowed to reopen it. And so for more than 10 years, it has been slowly reclaimed by nature. One of the only things Things you can see now that's even remotely recognizable is this what's left of Gandalf. How awesome is that? Unfortunately, people have come up the hill and broken off parts of him, but there's still a little bit bit left, standing in front of the larger version of Bag End, inside of which, past the shattered remains of Bilbo Baggins' front door, you can still see the fireplace. The home of Bilbo and later Frodo, where all those dwarves were cracking those plates. Dude, un- be Leaveable. I was obsessed with this place for years. This is the closest I ever got to doing the old trail. And now we'll never get a chance. Half of it was actually destroyed because there's a house up there now. And the rest of it is just impassable. I mean, maybe in the winter time, if all these vines die, you could kind of get up there. But according to the owner, who was perfectly willing for me to go up there at my own risk, when they tried to go up and see if they could bring some stuff down the hill to put on display down here, they found out that nearly everything had been destroyed, vandalized, or stolen. Lame. Dude, Hobbiton, USA. And a abandoned theme, well I'm not sure you could call it a theme park, an abandoned roadside attraction right here on the side of the Avenue of the Giants. Long forgotten now, but not by me. If you ever came here and took any pictures or video, please email them to me. I, like I said, I'm obsessed with this place. And if you happen to have acquired or know anyone who acquired all the old concrete statues that were stolen up there, please bring them back. Because I know the current owners would love to display some of that stuff where we can all see it and enjoy it. And not to be preachy, but guys, when there's some abandoned place you're exploring, don't steal the stuff. That just ruins it for everyone. Ah, yeesh, I'm bleeding through my pants now. Who knew thorns could be so mighty? Back behind the grill, you can see the remains of the old exit to the attraction. That's actually probably the best preserved part of the path. I'm hoping to get permission soon to go up that trail just to look around. But like I said, I'm still working on them, trying to get permission to go up that trail someday to explore. That's part of why I want any old photos of it that are out there. But in the meantime, I have been instructed to say, do not, do not go up that hill. Only for the obvious reasons, like trespassing and thorns and nails sticking up. And snakes and wasps and whatnot. But also, because like I said, there is a house up there. And they do not take kindly to people snooping around without permission on top of the hill. And even though, yes, it's California, up here in the wilderness, people are armed. Such an awesome stop. You wouldn't think so if you just drove by real quick at 55. But there's just so much mystery and history. And chimney tree. <laughs> no? Okay. Real quick. 
quick before I go, Allie did eat here a couple of weeks ago and said the food was really good. Plus the owner is like super, super sweet and nice. So if you come by, pop in the chimney tree, maybe get a root beer or a shake or something. It's the kind of mom and pop business that really could use your support. Oh man, like I said, this used to be the main highway, US 101. It was the old narrow twisty highway through the Redwoods. Now modern US 101 is located on the left side of the Eel River over there. And this road is now known as the Avenue of the Giants. It passes through so many more towns, past so many other cool attractions I wish I had time for today. When my brother and I were little, our parents brought us up here to the California Redwoods. And no matter where else in the wide world I've roamed since then. And as you know, I've roamed to quite a few places. I've never found anywhere else quite like these woods. There's something cathedral, like almost spiritual about them that I don't think either I nor anyone else could ever quite describe or capture on camera. We could talk about how massive the trunks are or cite facts about how tall these giants are till we're blue in the face. But I think there's something that has to be encountered. Something you have to slow down and stand in front of in awe with silence. And at least in my experience, once you do, these places just get into your soul forever. In a good way. You know, not in like a creepy exorcist way or anything. All right, well, that's all I have time for. With the Midsummer Scream convention and a trip to the East Coast right around the corner. Not to mention London's last summer vacation before junior high rapidly coming to a close. I'm afraid I'm just needed elsewhere. Don't worry, we'll be back. But for the moment, it's time for us to leave the Avenue of the Giants to other visitors. We have done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep well. I'll have a few more thoughts for you after the song. Check out the links down below to support the show. And I'll see you next time. And Ma? All right, guys, on the drive home, I've been thinking a lot. The Redwood Highway does not have the following that Route 66 has. The benefit of that is that it doesn't have the crowds. The downside is, is that a lot of the old historic buildings haven't been restored, old neon has disappeared, old little motels and auto courts have just sort of become bland and kind of boring, no retro theming. Route 66 became what it is. It's such a great road trip because of so many local historians, local booster groups who promoted the history of different places, dug out old photographs, helped to encourage businesses to restore themselves back to their old vintage glory. I mean, for me, without dozens of old postcards that were very hard to find, and two books, one about the Redwood Empire, and another one called Touring the Old Redwood Highway by Diane Hawk, I would have been completely lost up here as to what used to be. But if you come up here, not only does it never hurt to ask questions, but it often encourages people to tap into their own history and realize that there are all kinds of cool road, car culture, history enthusiasts who would love to come and travel this section of US 101 in a different way and look a little bit into the past. So if you want to make and keep these type of places special, pop into a mom and pop shop, pick up a souvenir, maybe get a slice of pie somewhere, leave suggestions, ask historical questions, share a video like this. Just some of the thoughts in my head. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this little piece of our Redwood Highway adventure, we shall return. Oh, and speaking of mom and pop, videos like this aren't exactly trending, so if you'd like to support us making more, make sure to check out the Patreon link, or maybe our shirts or pins or other stuff, all down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching. That's what really counts. We appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you next time.